Hey guys, before the video starts, please subscribe, hit that like button, tell us what you're thinking, follow us at Nerd Reptiles on Twitter, also New England Reptile on Instagram, Evil Morph God underscore official on Instagram, check us out on Facebook, but please like our channel, spread the word, we're trying to build this up, and the more interest we're getting, the more videos we're gonna do, and hopefully these videos are helping you better keep your animals. All right, let's go over substrate. So basically, there's a lot of different substrates you can go buy at a pet store. Um, let's just break, break it down to some of the basics. Uh, aspen bedding. This is uh, widely used in many different uh, scenarios. This is uh, often appropriate for colubrids, king snakes, corn snakes, rosy boas, sand boas, and stuff like that. What's nice about it, it's very clean. It looks great. It creates a deep substrate for your animal I mean, remember, animals, these animals are cryptic, so they really do like to hide. And uh, so if you put a deep substrate of this inside this cage, this bag would actually not be enough, in my opinion, for this animal. So it might even take up two. But if you give a substrate, oh, depending what the species is, but if you do a substrate of like three inches, it's, it's probably quite ideal. And that way, uh, when the animal defecates and uh, urinates or whatever, basically, the aspen is absorbing some of that moisture and then you can go through and just spot clean the animal. So what are the negatives of aspen? The negatives of aspen, it doesn't tolerate getting wet very well and it will mold. And sometimes you can get something called aspergillus mold. And we don't like that because that could actually cause uh, health ailments for your snake. So when this does get wet, you need to remove the wet material and you need to spot clean it. Uh, like all substrates, substrates are an excellent place for mites to hide. So if you're dealing with a mite problem, you do not want to use any bedding at all other than newspaper or some type of paper. So what I also I don't like about aspen, it does not maintain humidity. This is a desiccant. So that means, would I keep a green anaconda? Would I keep uh, Brazilian rainbow boa on aspen? No, I actually wouldn't. I wouldn't really recommend that. And if I did do that, I need to manage a hide area for that animal that gives that animal the proper humidity. And we're gonna go over that in a second. But literally, aspen is fine for king snakes, colubrids, any kind of desert type snake, anything that is tolerant of lower humidity. So when we're talking humidities of say 25 to 40 percent. Aspen is actually probably quite reasonable. It's, uh, it's inexpensive, looks great, and uh, it's, it's just well used. So the next one we're going to look at, which is also well used, is any kind of forest litter. So if we use cypress mulch or uh, any kind of, there's, there's multiple different types of things, but cypress mulch is ultimately the best. Uh, as far as it uh, has a natural antifungal property to it. It holds humidity very well. You can create uh, deep layers of it and you can uh, basically create a lot of humidity with that. So if I basically want to bring humidity to this enclosure, I would fill the cage with a deep layer. Once again, three inches is fine. And you fill that and then once this dries out, because it's already kind of moist in the bag, I can just add water. So I can literally just pour water in there and I can also use these little lo lovely spray bottles. These are wonderful. You add some water, pump, 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 and you can spray the cage down. So basically what you're doing is you're managing your humidity that's desired for your animal by adding water, trapping some of the humidity in the cage by, if you have a screen top, by things like this. And also, uh, constantly replenishing the water. So over time, it might take a week, it might take days, it might take weeks for this cage to start drying out. But as it starts drying out, you just have to keep replenishing the water. Uh, okay, so one of the other things, yes. Newspaper. Newspaper is wonderful. Why is newspaper wonderful? Well, I can put a nice thick layer of newspaper, wrap up the sides, put it in there, it's clean, if I have any problems with mites, or if I have any problems at all, it's easier for me to observe the snake. What are some of the negatives? Some of the negatives, newspaper doesn't necessarily 
hold humidity very well. But what's really great about newspaper is I can add more of it and then I can clump up pieces of newspaper into balls. And if I put these inside the cage and I spray these down with water, this actually achieves multiple different things. What this does is, so we, now we have a newspaper bottom. We put some balls in here, we spray it down. We're gonna beef up the humidity. We have to maybe revisit this idea in about two or three days and add some more moisture. But I can clutter up the cage very cheaply with a lot of these newspaper balls. And what happens is if I'm dealing with animals that are very uh, nervous and shy, they'll often appreciate being able to hide underneath the newspaper. So I could have fancy hide boxes and all the different kind of stuff like that. But I could also have things like newspaper and sometimes you can actually take the newspaper and you start creating these little hides and you can do it, make bigger ones and you put it down like this and you'll find the animals will sit right underneath them and you just spray it down with water. So what's really great about this, if I have a new animal, I wanna make sure it doesn't have any mites, I wanna check on its health. If I keep newspaper in the cage, and I watch the newspaper, an animal with a respiratory infection will actually, when it lays on the newspaper, and if it sits there for a little while, then it moves off, and you notice wetness, that's a great indicator that the animal's drooling. So it has an upper respiratory infection, it can have some kind of mouth stomatitis, some kind of issue. So if you are noticing that your snake is leaving behind these uh, little wet spots or different colored uh, fluids coming out of that, that's a clear indicator you actually have an animal that has a disease and you need to actually address that, and maybe fix the parameters of your husbandry and possibly uh, go see a vet. Reptiles love to hide. So remember, pretty much all snakes are gonna be cryptic, which means they need to feel secure and they need to feel hidden because uh, a snake often sitting out in the open is exposed to predators. Even though it's in your living room, it still has a natural instinct to be cryptic and basically disguise itself and, and stay safe. So it's kind of like inborn in these animals. So there's a couple ways we can do this. So I wanna painfully go over a point. If I take an enclosure such as this and I strip it down, and I manage the temperatures and uh, I put some kind of substrate in here like paper and I put this animal in a, a big open space. What's the problem with that? The problem is this, that animal wants to hide. It is cryptic. We keep talking, I keep saying cryptic. They want to hide. So I need to provide fixtures in the cage that go beyond just managing the temperatures of what this animal needs. Besides feeding it, giving it water, and managing the temperatures, I need to think about the welfare of that animal and actually what that animal's thinking. I need to basically make sure that I'm meeting the basic requirements of that animal. And the easy way to do that is by adding fixtures into the cage. And one of my favorite things would be something like a hide box. There's all sorts of hide boxes right here. These, what these, these do, these provide a safe retreat where that animal then can go in there, hide, not have to look at you, not have to see a dog running by, not have to sit out in the daylight when it actually wants to come out at night. And what they do, the animal's gonna go in there and it's gonna sit there and it's gonna go to sleep because that's what snakes like to do. They like to sleep a lot. They're conserving their energy. So when we're talking about animals that love humidity, uh, boas are a great example, all sorts of different boas. They're really gonna appreciate humidity. So we, we described this high box type situation for something like an anaconda, but this is wonderful for Burmese python, boa constrictors, reticulated pythons. And remember, if the bin, the hide bin is too big for your animal, you wanna pack it, that extra space, you wanna fill it up with uh, cocoa, pea, uh, sphagnum moss. If I use something like this for a hide area, this is, this is a nice fixture to have in the cage. But the problem with this, I can't really trap humidity in here. So what's gonna happen is you'll often notice these half logs in pet stores and what, whatnot. They're fine as far as uh, some kind of fixture in the cage and it's, it's gonna add things to the, maybe the quality of the animal's life as far as it moving around and investigating things. But I want maybe a little bit more. So I'd have something like this, but I would not get something like this and still not have the humid hide. The humid hide is critical. So if I'm keeping things like Brazilian rainbow boas, green anacondas, boa constrictors, 
stuff like that are sunbeam snakes. So there are colubrids that really, really need a moist retreat. So if I have something like a sunbeam snake, which basically it's, it's almost like a fossorial snake. So it likes to live underground. It's always hiding. So it's living in the dirt. So the dirt is always giving it a, a place of humidity. So if, even if I had like a ring neck snake or a decay snake, some kind of a colubrid that I can go outside and catch, I would want to make sure I have a moist area because if I put this in a cage with something like aspen bedding, let's say a ring neck snake, a brown snake, or a northern brown snake, something like that, I could easily desiccate that animal. But a boa like this would love a, a bin like this. It would certainly love this kind of thing. I could even pack this full of moss. I could build a roof on it. I could put a hole in it. I could be very, very creative. Another thing you can do, if I have a deep layer substrate in the cage, what I can do, I can create little burrows. So I have a big water dish like this. And if I actually put a water dish like this over, over the mulch, a deep layer of substrate, and I've underneath here, so I have this much substrate, and I'm putting this over here, I could go and hollow it out underneath here, make like an opening, and the animal will actually go and rest there. And I can also kind of manage that over towards the warmer end if I don't feel like the snake is spending time on the hot end. I can do things inside the cage. I can pretty much take a, a tile, a ceramic tile. I can put it in the cage. I can put it over a deep layer substrate if I'm trying to manage humidity, hollow out an area, put the tile down, create a little opening, and the snake will actually sit in there. Now I've created this humid hide. And the animal, one thing that's really good about this is as the animal is comfortable, it often will tell you that it wants to eat. And what they'll do is they'll locate their head outside the hide box. If you start noticing your snake is always sitting there with its head out the hide, hide hole, it's telling you something. It's generally telling you it's associating you with food and it's going to sit there and look for a food opportunity. Same thing in a burrow. If you notice the nose of the snake is sitting there, once again, it's telling you it wants to eat. So you have to be, you know, kind of keyed in on snake behavior. But uh, most important thing right now, we're just talking about nailing all your husbandry aspects. When we talk about husbandry, it is basically talking about the methods of how we actually keep these animals in captivity. Because the animals live very successful in the ecosystems that they live in the wild. And what we're trying to do is we're trying to duplicate those ecosystems to basically uh, improve the comfort and the quality of that animal's existence. Because if I manage all the husbandry properly and I give it the proper temperatures, humidity, heat, and uh, mental conditions, the animal will succeed. And if I don't do that, I'll start noticing things like disease, failure to thrive, failure to feed. So you always make sure your husbandry is nailed. Let's address making your animal feel secure. So if I have a glass box and it's viewable from all sides, basically I'm not necessarily making maybe some animals that are a little bit higher strung, I'm not making them feel secure. So there are ways to manage that too. So I already have a background in here, but I could also replace this background by just blocking it out with paper. And then I use some paper here, cardboard. And then I do that here. And then I even do it on the front of the cage. And now I only have a much smaller viewing area. Uh, but if I want to make this cage, if I have an animal and say it's not eating, or it's, it's a new pet, or something like that, it is my job to basically over anticipate the needs of this animal. And because an animals come from one situation to your situation, that is sometimes the biggest snag in that animal's life, where all of a sudden it stops feeding and it stops thriving. So it's your job just to kind of think of the animal, it's shy, pretty much consider all snakes as being shy, and uh, basically just try to do something to actually help the transition. So covering up the cage, covering up the ends, covering up the back, making it a little bit darker. You can still have light in here, but what you're doing is you're limiting the activity. So a dog running back and forth, a cat sitting on top of the cage, all this different stuff. Putting the cage down low. If I put this cage down low and I'm always standing over it or there's a lot of traffic, some of those things are hindrances to the acceptability that that animal has for living in your home. So when I start covering things up and I start doing things like that, I'm trying to basically address the cryptic nature of these animals. So then another thing we can do 
with the substrate, we can add any kind of thing like this. We're, we're basically, we're adding uh, fixtures. And fixtures can be any that animal feel cryptic. You're basically dressing what the animal needs. Not that my idea is like, oh, a big giant cage, that must be lovely. It, it, it often isn't that. I can take an animal out of a small cage or a drawer, or I'm going to cover some other Tupperware bins, keep it in that cage where it's done wonderful, and then suddenly put it in this big giant cage and the animal stops feeding. Or if I send one of my wonderful animals to somebody, and then two weeks later they call me, well, that animal hasn't fed. And I'm like, wow, that's crazy, because I know that animal eats great, and I know my employees, we have very uh, strict policies as far as the animal has to be doing very well for us, doing everything it's supposed to do, because I cannot expect my animals, if they're not doing well here, for them to do well for anybody else. So, but if we send somebody a wonderful animal, or if you got an animal from all the other different wonderful breeders, and they send it to you, and then suddenly it's not eating, and the animal looks really healthy, a lot of times it's a, something that I failed as far as my husbandry. I didn't necessarily address the animal's needs. So that's what all these videos are for. We're basically trying to make sure we're covering all the different parameters, help you problem solve, and go through like a flow chart, making sure you're addressing all these things. So remember, kind of a cluttered up cage, cryptic place, maybe the cage not being too big, but still managing its temperatures. That's the most important thing. Managing the temperatures, enough space for the animal to heat up, cool down, get water, get the heat, get the humidity, eat and feel secret. Those are the basic things. Once the animal's set up in your care and you know it's thriving, then maybe you can go take it from the small cage into a larger cage to make it, you know, the kind of display that you want. So cluttering up the cage, we can put cork bark, any of these things that you can go buy. These are all wonderful. They make great hides, anything like that just to, to eat up the space. And like I said before, crumpled up paper even. Is it, it might look a little bit ghetto, but it's very effective. If you put up lots and lots of balls in here and you make a deep layer of these balls and you have an anaconda, you have a Brazilian rainbow, you have some animal that is very secretive and is just not doing what you want it to do, cover it all up and that works great. All right, let's go over water dishes. All snakes need water and it is your job to always make sure your snake is a clean source of water. Sometimes also managing the size of the water dish. Uh, many snakes, certainly when they're younger, not maybe a 15 foot python, but basically, how about a three foot python? Three foot python will actually like to go in a water dish sometimes to soak. So a bin like this, if this was its water dish, and I filled this bin, oh, about a third to halfway full of water, I'd probably say a third full of water, and I filled it and put it in here in the cage, and I didn't let it uh, fall over, that animal will go and sit in its water, and basically as it's digesting, it might want to go in here to cool down. Let's say it's going to go into a shed. You know, when snakes shed, and you should probably check out uh, how to deal with a stuck shed video, but uh, basically when snakes are shedding, they have an extra need for moisture, and they need to not be in a situation where they get desiccated. So having a large enough water dish where the animal can actually go in there and soak. There's so many cool epoxy ones, uh, all sorts of great different shapes, rocks and stuff like that. And these also double as if I put it on a substrate, make a little tunnel, and I hollow out the area, now it becomes a little hide area for that animal. Uh, you know, obviously dog dishes, but even this dog dish right here, that's still a hide for that animal. The animals will go right under there, and they love that space, because remember, snakes want to hide. They want to feel like they're concealed. That is what gives them safety, and a safe snake is a comfortable snake. So we can also look at things like this. This is actually designed for turtles, but this will work for lizards, but actually work for snakes because if I had like a baby ball python or some small colubrids and such, they'll go in here in this water thing, they'll, they'll soak in there. It's a flat bottom with a little hollow out. I can once again hollow out underneath the substrate, snake can then use that as a hide area. More hide areas, the better. This is the end of part two, dealing with snake enclosures and basically addressing husbandry needs of terrestrial snakes. Please make sure you check out part three in this series.